Hey guys, Brian Hill, Complete Combatant. Out here doing a little practice. Uh, ammo's incredibly expensive. Uh, we're all finding it hard to find and hard to shoot. So we gotta get the most out of what we can. We can't stop practicing our skills. We gotta have a good way to do that. Uh, this is the mix six drill that I came up with. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new inside this drill. It's just a different reformatting of information. But my research was conducted by watching active self-protection extra or active self-protection videos because that's where all the information was. How does the armed citizen interact with violent criminal actors? What were their hand positions? What was required of them? So five of these drills in the six are things that you would see in a fight. Uh, one is simply a processing thing at the end where we do two reload two, just to see how your processing time is. Uh, it sounds cooler to say mix six than mix five, I felt like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. We do this at five yards. We're doing it on the M3 strategies. Uh, uh, they're, M3 Strategies MK3 target, which has a bullseye in the middle. So if you've got a B8 replacement center and you got a three by five card, you can do it on your own. You don't need these cool targets, but it does help. But what we're doing is trying to stack complexity with our movements. So it's not just a draw. I have a little bit of complexity, a different hand position, maybe a verbal command, maybe I have to do a reload, something like that. And we're gonna see if I can shoot on demand. So this is performance mode. It's not accuracy mode, it's not speed mode but it matters. And I'm trying to bring to it the same deliberateness I would bring in a fight, that I'm going to make sure that everything works accordingly, that I'm fully present, and that I, nothing throws me off from that, all right? Possible 150 points, each round is worth 10 points. Anything outside of the bullseye is scored as zero. The head scored is 10, nine, zero. So it makes it pretty easy. If you have a three by five card, you miss it, it's just zero. Let's do that. That'll make it easier for you guys, okay? 15 rounds, let's see how this goes. As Tom Gibbons says, what happens to paranoid people? Nothing, all right, so check the gun, we're ready to go. I have a three second par time for this draw and fire two shots, so don't look for a sub second draw on this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draw with an 80-20 speed at the end. And I'm going to have a focus sight picture and when that dot settles in there, I will precisely press the trigger. All right, stand by. Two eighty nine. So no rush, no hurry on that one. Two or six on the draw and eighty three split. Just taking my time, getting a good motion in it. Maybe that's a little slower than I should be, but I don't want you guys to think you have to do this super fast. This is a drill of cognitive stacking. It is not a speed and accuracy drill, although that does play a role in it. Next one is from a low ready. I'll issue a verbal command during the delay. When it beeps, I'll fire two rounds center of the bullseye. Don't move! So 149 total because there's no draw, and 82 and a 67 split. So not pushing anything here. Practicing saying a command that I want somebody to uh, respond to. For me, it's don't move. I can command that because I'm going to try to get away from them if I can at all cost. All right, now we're going to practice as if we had a phone in our hand. And the problem with the non-dominant hand is we don't tend to drop what's in it. So if we have a pen or a notebook or a phone or our loved one, we don't let go of that. So this is the idea of practicing it. I simply do an easy transfer of the hands, get the gun out and fire two rounds. I'll have three seconds to do this one also. This is 65, two draw, 65 split. All right, we'll be doing just fine working our way right through this. Now a failure to neutralize. So I shot two to the body. I didn't get the desired effect that I want to, so I'm going to move to the head. Uh, you have more time on this one, four seconds to do the whole drill. Any hand position you want, okay? So I'm going to start with the cheater, the hands down this time. Okay, 289, a 156, and 75, 75. All right, so 
not too bad. Uh, well done, just a little transfer to that. Okay, now I'm gonna draw and fire with the primary hand only. So I have something in this hand I simply can't let go of. I may be guiding or moving somebody or I'm controlling something that's important. So I'm gonna make sure I get it out of the way. I'm gonna draw and fire with my primary hand only. I have five seconds to do this. So a 306, 210 on the draw, 96 split. So just a little slower on the split, no big deal. All right. Now the final one is two reload two. Okay. I can set this up so it's a slide lock reload. So that means I'd have two rounds in the gun. So let's do that. Now the way that I hold my gun, it's not going to lock back. So I'm just going to have to treat it almost like a malfunction drill, which will add a little bit more time. So I've got two rounds here. And then let's put two rounds in our magazine. Okay, we'll put an extra one just in case. Or not. I think that was the last one. Perfect. Okay. Now this has nothing to do with fighting. We know these are very rare in armed citizen uh, encounters. But what we're going to do is measure my processing speed at the end of this. How can I stay in the moment with each activity derived from me? Any hand position you want to start from, so I'll start from a hands up position. I'm gonna draw and fire two and reload two. I've given a, a very lenient par time of this on nine seconds because I don't want it to deter people from trying it. Some of you, that may feel like a really fast par time. We'll see what we get for this. All right, stand by. get locked back both times so does that mean my grip is right or maybe i've changed it enough where it's working okay i'm gonna just make sure it's clear here locked open work my way back to the holster and now the drill is is completed so i've shot 15 rounds total okay so let's go over there and see what the target looks like because the target always tells well we did all right, didn't we? Okay. All right, it is a line break, but it does count. Okay, and then I have everything else inside the target. So it's 150, it's a perfect score on that. All right, and which tells me two things, that I could probably pick up the pace a little bit more as I'm working this. So next time I do that, I'm going to try to do something sooner and more efficient or a bit more urgently so that I do a better job. I have an abundance of accuracy, so uh, it doesn't really leave me as I do things quickly. Uh, I gotta tell you guys, it's hard managing the camera, remembering what the next movement is and doing everything correctly. So it puts an incredible cognitive load on me too, outside of just the drill, but trying to manage and, and get the information across and know what's next. So uh, very pleased with that. My shooting's good. You can see each hand position, I'm in good position. It doesn't matter for me if my hands are up or down or one hand's on the phone, I can simply draw the weapon. I try to keep in that one five range for a draw. Sometimes it's exceeded that, but that's a pretty good metric for us in getting hits like this. Um, now, a passing score would be 135, which is 90%. So I could go 15 points down. So that means I could get them all in the nine ring and still pass, okay? But try to get them in here. This is, this is a no fail shot and try to get these inside the bullseye here, which is a lot like the chest. And I think you guys will enjoy that. 15 rounds, and then you're gonna notice something in there that you need to practice. Um, for me, interestingly enough, uh, I probably need to practice uh, with this one a little bit more failure to neutralize. Uh, we've, I, my wife has finally gotten her gun back and she's got a beautiful SRO. So I'm running the VP9 again. So it was a little different on the transfer and it actually came up a little higher. It's a little lighter gun, uh, but I just didn't feel as connected to the dot. So I'm really gonna work on that because as I played that back, I could feel that. Sometimes as I rolled it down, I didn't see the dot as soon as I would because I'm running RMRs instead of Romeo ones, which is a little smaller window. So I have a lot of informational practice. Now, neither one of those things, I need a lot of rounds to practice. So once I get done, I just go practice with it. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Listen, if you're struggling, uh, my gift as a coach, four decades of doing this, is to help you get over that hurdle. 
Uh, technical skills won't get you there. You're going to have to build some sort of mental uh, management program that's going to allow you to get better at what you're doing and to handle stress. As you guys can see, the stress doesn't affect me because I know what it is. Uh, when we're mixed martial arts fighters, we have no gear. It's just us. And what you have to do is learn how to manage yourself so that on demand you can fire perfect score. Okay, Can't do that every time. But that's pretty much my common now when I practice this. And that gives me incredible confidence that I can simply pick up the gun and be able to defend myself with it as I practice through it. So give it a try, guys. Remember, measure, refine, and perform. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. You can find us at thecompletecombatant.com. We have a beautiful website there, thanks to my wife. And we'd be glad to answer or help you in any way we can. Have a great day. Thank you.